Okay, it's Queen. It's you're my best friend, and and uh, Adam Lambert is here with us Yay. in the studio, and he said this is one of the songs that he's never done with. It's them. one of the few. Yeah, we, yeah. There's like this small little portion of music from their catalog that I haven't touched, and it's a great song, fantastic song. Yeah, you know, it really is. Well, and it's a mystery why. I don't you know. Don't I have know. to ask them now. I just realized that. I had something to ask them. But welcome to town. Thank you. It's good to see you here. <laughs> good morning. Uh, you know, you have... Uh, I think it's accurate to describe you in, in this manner because I was talking to some people the other day about you specifically. And even though you weren't officially proclaimed as such, you, in fact, won American Idol. Oh, <laughs> I, I feel like I, I won something great. I mean, look at me. I'm on, going to be on tour with Queen now. I yeah, exactly. no, but I won but, many things that but, I'm very thankful for. But yeah. you won because because in through, life. through the exposure <laughs> on that show, an audience just fell in love with your talent and your personality. And I mean, Aww. it's just, you know, you you just you came out of that experience a real winner. Yeah, I, I'm really thankful for it. I had a great time. And... That's all I wanted from the show. I was like, you know, I hope this throws the door open somewhere and gives me a, a shot at something. Mm -hmm. So I, it did just that. I'm very thankful. Well, when you were in, uh, did your house have a basement? When I grew up? No, I was a Southern Californian, so, oh, so no don't basement. have basements. No. So, so, you know, kids here would go down in the basement and they would pretend that they're, uh, you know, big stars and they would sing or play. I had a lot of bedroom moments themselves. like that. So you yeah. did it in your bedroom. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so when you were imagining... When you were just a kid, when you were just pretending, who were you pretending to be? Who were you emulating? There's a lot of Michael Jackson early on. If I, I think there's some video of me somewhere with, you know, a, like my dad's jacket on, big shoulder pads and a hat, trying to do the choreography poorly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of Michael Jackson. And, and, and at one point, Elvis, my, my grandmother had bought me a... Uh, like an Elvis karaoke tape, mm -hmm. and so I was like learning how to sing like Elvis, and then so did the king, you do the hips? so the king of rock and roll. I tried so the king of rock and roll and the king of pop. You know, and, yeah. and, and both known for their movement as sure. well as their music. And and interestingly enough, you look at a lot of Freddie's influences in Queen, and and he he loved Elvis. You know, they did like Elvis moments on tour, and and he met Michael, and I think that they had a you know uh, like a working friendship. So. Well, crazy little thing called love has a bit of Elvis. Totally, totally in the vocal. Elvis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got it. That's got some Elvis yeah. in the vocal. And uh, it took, you know, a a leap of faith and courage for you to join up with Queen and go out on tour. Because even though everybody knew you had the talent, you know, it's Queen. It's Freddie Mercury. Couldn't be sure how people were going to react, and Queen fans embraced you. Yeah, and I was—I have to say—I I didn't know what was going to happen when the offer kind of came through. Of course, I couldn't pass it up. But man, I was terrified. <laughs> well, what was the phone call like, or what was the scenario when? Well, you first... well, after singing their song "Bohemian Rhapsody" as my audition for Idol, uh, they were invited on for the finale, and I met them then, and we sang "We Are the Champions." Mm -hmm. And there was definitely like a an unspoken sort of resonance there. We kind of—it felt good. It felt right. There was a there was a cool connection. And uh, there was interest, so their manager reached out, and I had to put out my album and tour first. I wanted to do my thing and solidify my solo career, mm -hmm. um, get that off the ground. And, and then some opportunities came up, and one thing led to another. And our first official concert performance, two-hour performance, was in the Ukraine in front of about a quarter of a million people oh, out, wow. in the t out in the square. They had all these people come out. It was this big event. Just a little nerve-wracking? Just, just, and wow. I had nine days of rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I know they're big hits, but I, I wasn't as familiar with some of the more obscure B-side stuff, so it was, a lot of, it was a lot of material. A lot of pressure. And a, and a lot under pressure. That one, we did that <laughs> one. You know, and that's the thing, honestly, like, it, it's one thing to just get up on stage and sing some songs, but the weight of the legacy of Freddie and Queen is is very heavy. You know, it's a, it's very it's massive, and that was the thing that scared me more. I thought, are these fans going to like boo me off the stage or but throw beer didn't. bottles at me? They did not. They did not. They, they did caught. not. They embraced you, and so <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. Of course, you would have been. Of course, you'd be nervous. Anybody would be nervous. Yeah. But when you started to feel the audience reaction. And, you know, that kind of warm embrace, 
that you received that made the tour so successful, which is why you're doing another one. I mean, uh, how did that make you feel emotionally? It was a big payoff. I mean, a, a, a combination of relief. I definitely felt like, okay, cool. Okay, after the first handful of shows when I realized this was all going well, it was fantastic. And I also, you know, I felt honored. I felt like, wow, you know, not only are these fans embracing this experience, but Brian and Roger have been unbelievable. They've been so collaborative. They've given me a lot of freedom. They've been so supportive. And and, and that was another thing that I, I didn't know how it was going to pan out. I, I I thought, okay, they're asking me to do this, but are they going to like be cool with how I do it? Or, you know, and I also thought to myself, look, I can go into this and because they are who they are, I'm cool with them just telling me exactly how to sing every song if that's how they want to do it. And to my delight, they were like, well, whatever you'd want to do, what do you want to do with it? Well, and you know, you talk about working with Brian, you're working with one of the smartest people on the entire planet yes, Earth. Agreed. Really? You know, uh, I mean, as an academic. And on top of that, there's that small little thing about how he's a knight of the realm. Yeah, <laughs> it's serious business. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know? I think he has a planet somewhere. You know, so do you yeah. call him Sir? Uh, all the time. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doctor. Yeah. yeah. Which, which, which does he which prefer? Which takes precedent? Well, there's also a professor. Yeah. There's professor. Well, there's, chancellor. There's, there's chancellor, chancellor as well. There's doctor, professor, yeah. chancellor, and sir mm-hmm. are all titles that Brian has earned. Yes, he's 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 unbelievably intelligent. And, you know, Roger has a doctorate as well. And being, like, traveling with them, being on the plane, going from city to city, there are times where I'm, I'm, I'm out, way out of my league, you know, as far as their conversation. But I like to listen and try to learn. So it's... Well, what do they talk about? Everything. You know, whether it's, you know, the old days or whether it's, like, current political events and situations or... I, there are a lot of things that I, that, like I said, they're not my area of expertise, but I, I find myself... Leaving these these segments of the tour of thinking, oh, I've learned things. How about today. Sub- subatomic particles? I mean, Do sometimes we get about- into we get into that kind of stuff, and I kind of shut down. String. <laughs> I don't really know string theory. Yeah, I'm like, you know. okay, yeah, which one? The one on your guitar? What? You, which string? <laughs> no, a different kind of string. You know, if you if you were to go back and read Maria Melito's tweets back when you were on Idol, Maria is on at uh, nine af- after us. You would be able to see that she was calling for Queen to recruit you Aww. super early on. Oh, that's so sweet. Before you probably ever met them. Oh, you know. So, well, apparently it, it all came from. Oh, and Queen's her favorite band of all time. So, the, so, so wow, so was a hardcore pathetic. Queen fan. Yeah. Gorgeous. I yeah. love that. Well, I, the Spike, who is the sort of fifth unsung member of of Queen, he plays keys mm-hmm. with us. He's played keys with them since the mid '80s. When Freddie was like, "Okay, I want to sing and not have to play every time," and he he apparently saw the audition on Idol and and rang them up and, and said, "You got to check this guy out." So, mm. thanks, Spike. <laughs> I love that you put them off. I mean, how many people would say, "Well, I want to put my own album out first. I want to, you know, that takes." Yeah, but he had to do that. He had to do that in order to establish his... his but that takes balls. Yeah. It was also sort of contractual at that point, so yeah. <laughs> it was kind of in the, in the, in the yeah. deal. But yeah, but yeah and, and, and it was great, and it's been great being able to have both, you know? I'm, I'm really lucky that I've been able to sort of have two sides of this career, and, and, and they both really satisfy a special something for me as an artist. Well, Adam Lambert is with us here at Q1043. And uh, what else has been going on in your life, I, I've young been, man? Uh, well, uh, uh-huh. you know, I've been enjoying my house. I got a dog, which is, which is like the first time dog? I've had a, 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 it's a... It's a Chihuahua Basenji mix. And he's three years old. I rescued him from a group, and I've named him Pharaoh. Boy, Maria's, Maria's going to love him even more. I know. He rescued a dog. And I, you know, I was, it was, it was, I, I thought about it for a while. It's like, I've always wanted a dog. And, and, and I thought when I got him, he's, he's so great. He's such a sweet, sweet dog. And he's so smart. And I thought, there's no way he's sleeping in my bed. I'm not one of those people. Mm-hmm. Uh, Day three. I'm like, get in here. <laughs> And I've been working on um, um, solo material as well. And um, when can we expect uh, to hear some more of that? I mean, you've already sold millions of albums and singles. I mean, he really has his solo career. I mean, that you know, 
you, you hear those on some other stations down the hall, not here. We're the classic rock station. But let's be, <laughs> let's be honest, we're talking about a very successful career so far. Things are good, yeah. I, I actually don't know when I'm going to put it out yet. Uh, I haven't decided. Um, I'm still working on things, still conceptualizing things. But I definitely have some music that I'm really excited about. And you're a young guy. You love classic rock. I love it, yeah. I mean, I read this uh, new Musical Express thing about your love for Zeppelin. I love that. You love Led Zeppelin. That was one of the other. Uh, that was one of the other weeks on Idol that I was really proud of. Uh, we got to do whole lot of love. First time that a Zeppelin song had been approved for that show. Wow. Yeah, it was exciting. It was really exciting. And there's all these rumors about Desert Trip. Oh, the festival. I've heard. It. What are the, what are the rumors that they're that going to show up? Robert is going to say yes because they Ooh. upped the price from fourteen million. I guess wow. fourteen million wasn't enough for the offer for the band, but it's yeah. just a rumor. Yeah, I, I hear good things about that festival. Oh yeah, well yeah. it was very successful yeah. the first year, but the uh, the uh, it, Robert Plant's web page is now just black with the, with a little cryptic message. I, it, it just says. Uh, any time now. Right. Oh, okay. So it's all rum- <laughs> So it's all rumors. People are trying to figure it out. But you love Led Zeppelin. Who else? Oh, and the classic rock. I mean, if, if I go back to... I mean, Jimi Hendrix is like a genius. Mm-hmm. Uh, Janis Joplin loved her. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I could... <laughs> so you like Hendrix? I love Hendrix, yeah. Okay, I want yeah. you to see the inside of my jacket. Oh, cool. It's a custom jacket. That's dope. I yeah. love that. Yeah, there it is. Beautiful. Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Yeah. Stunning. This was a gift from Mark Montanero. I know. Very nice. Yeah, I grew, I grew up in a house where, you know, my, my dad had a lot of vinyl, and I heard a lot of great music. So, you know, I think I got a good education as far as the classics. Mm-hmm. Well, it's always our pleasure to welcome you here whenever you're in town. Always. I, I hope you had a good time. I know you saw a Broadway show. And yep. uh, I got saw the... some friends, and you know, I had a good time. It was a good trip. All right, short and sweet. <laughs> well, you'll be back in July. Queen plus Adam Lambert at Prudential Center, July twenty sixth, and Barclays Center on July twenty eighth. Good luck to you, and thanks for spending time Thank with you. us. Thanks, guys. We do appreciate it. New York's classic rock, Q one zero four three.